So we're going to look at a couple of questions from the Pre-Cal Spring 2016 uh, semester exam review. So uh, we're going to look at the section for oblique triangles. So this is question number 10. And so uh, we have three different questions. So question A, um, or for all of these questions, um, you want to first determine whether or not you're going to use the law of sines or the law of cosines to solve based on the information provided. Okay. And so remember, for a law of cosines, there are two types of triangles information um, that will determine using the law of cosines. So one is if you're given all three sides, so a side, side, side triangle. The other is if you have a side angle side. <coughs> And um, so if you have either of those two types of triangles, then you want to use law of cosines. So if we look at problem A, we see we have side lengths 11, 15, and 9. So if you want, you can draw yourself a picture. Your picture doesn't have to be to scale by any means. And label it. Sometimes drawing your picture and labeling the information provided helps you determine which type of triangle you have. So um, it's pretty easy to see, either from the picture or from the information, that this is a side-side-side triangle, so that means I'm going to use the law of cosines. Typically, the law of cosines is in the form a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc <coughs> times the cosine of your angle that is opposite the side you're solving for. But in this problem, since we have all three sides, what we're actually going to solve for is the angle itself. So <clears throat> there's a few versions of how this can be written. Um, we're going to solve for the cosine A portion. So if we solve for A, we were winding up taking the inverse cosine. And um, one way you could see the other side is if you just moved everything over, it would be A squared minus B squared minus C squared over negative 2BC. Or <clears throat> if you change all your signs, then it becomes b squared plus c squared minus a squared over a positive 2bc. So you notice this is the same formula, <coughs> just everything has changed signs as, <coughs> as compared to the original. So um, we need to figure out which angle we're solving for. So the rest of the question says, what is the measure of the smallest angle? So remember, the smallest angle will always be opposite of the smallest side. So my smallest side is 9, so that's going to be the a side. And so I'm going to looking for, um, so I would call that A, and so I'm looking for angle A here. So uh, I just need to make sure that the 9 goes in whatever a position A is, with, depending on which equation I use. The other two sides will be my B's and my C's. Okay, so um, to get my angle A, I simply plug all that information to my equation, and then it goes into the formula. Make sure that your calculator is set to degrees if you want a degree answer. So um, I typically use the first one just because it helps me remember to put the, first, um, the, the side opposite my angle first, but you, you can use either one. And so uh, when I do this, and I put this in the calculator, I'm going to get angle A equal to 36.580. And I should expect to get a smaller number. My smallest angle will always be an acute angle. Um, the largest angle is going to be opposite the largest side, and it could be acute or obtuse depending on you know how your triangle is shaped. Um, but it should always be the biggest, biggest angle and the biggest side go together. And the middle angle and the middle side go together as well. So if you're not looking for the large angle or you're not looking for the small angle, then you're looking for the one in the middle. Okay. So that is using the law of cosines to find an angle. So now let's look at another example, example B, um, two streets bounding our triangle, and this is nice because they already give us the triangle, um, make a 74 degree angle, and the lengths of the streets are 110 and 126. So I can see from this picture that I have a side, an included angle, and then a side again. So this is a side angle side problem, so that's going to use the law of cosines. So this means I'm going to use just the regular version of the law of cosines because I am looking for the side that is opposite my angle. Um, so you notice 74 degrees, I'm looking for this side over here. So um, all I have to do is plug my information into the formula itself. So that's going to become 110 squared plus 126 squared minus 2 times 110 times 126 times the cosine of 74 degrees. <clears throat> Put that into your calculator. 
and you're going to get the number 20,335.3. Obviously, that is not the length of the side because that's a ridiculously large number. So the final step is to remember that gives you a squared side value. So you need to take the square root of each side. And so if we take the square root of our answer, make sure when you do this um, on a step like this that you... Um, don't round or truncate your answer so that you get a more accurate answer. Otherwise, you could, might get too much variation in your answer and, and it might be close to something else. Okay, so when we take the square root of all the values that we have, we're going to get something close to 142.6. And that's going to be in feet. Alright, so that is the second way that we would use law of sine, excuse me, law of cosines. So let's look at the third example that's in our review, uh, question C. Um, we're told a triangle ABC, we're given side A is 14, angle C is 57 degrees, and angle B is 45.6 degrees. And what we want to do is we want to find the length of side C. <clears throat> so on a problem like this where they list out three things um, in this form, I definitely recommend drawing a picture so that you can more easily determine whether or not you have uh, what information you're given. Okay, so label your triangle ABC. It doesn't really matter what um, order they go around. Okay, and then label the details into the triangle. <clears throat> so when you do that, you're going to see that um, I have an angle, a side that's included between the angles, and an angle. So this is an angle side angle. So this is going to be a law of sines problem. Um, law of sines we can use when we have angle angle side, angle side angle, as well as side angle angle. Okay, so basic, sorry, that's the same as the first one. Um, I meant to say side, side angle. So the trick here is that you have an angle and a side that are opposite of each other, <clears throat> and that's going to allow you to set up your proportion <clears throat> and solve for it. So notice that I don't have either of the opposite sides, but anytime you have two angles in a triangle, you can find the third angle simply by subtracting from 180. <clears throat> so to find angle A, I simply say 180 minus the other two angles, so minus 57 minus 45.6, and I'm going to find that angle A is equal to 77.4 degrees. So that's my angle A. So now I can see that angle, the 14 and the 77.4 are opposite of each other. That's kind of that's an indicator that I'm going to use the proportion to solve. Now, just to remind you what the law of sines looks like, there's two ways we can set it up. We can set it up with the angle on top, and we can use any two fractions set equal to each other, or I can set it up with a side on top. So I could put C over sine C equals B over sine B equals A over sine A. And my recommendation is just choose whichever format. Um, puts the unknown value in the numerator because it's just a little less manipulation that you have to do. So since we're finding side C, I'm going to choose the fraction that has side C. Then I'm also going to choose the other part of the, the equation that has the angle side pair, which is my ace. So I'm going to set those two things equal to each other. Okay, so I don't really care about the, the B over sine B part. We just need two things to equal. So now I'm going to plug in the information I know. C is um, over, sorry, C over the sine of the C angle, which is 57 degrees, is equal to my A length, which is 14, over the A sine of the A angle, which is 77.4 degrees. All right, so to solve for C, all I have to do is multiply each side by what's in the denominator over here. So it's going to multiply over here. So what we're going to put in the calculator is going to be 14 times the sine of 57 degrees over the sine of 77.4 degrees. So when you put that into the calculator, you should get that side C is equal to 12.031. And that's all you have to do for the law of sines. Um, so again, if you have a side and an angle that are opposite of each other, then typically you're going to be using the law of sines to solve that triangle.